The UK has a new government and a new Prime Minister, Sir Keir Starmer. So unless you, if you're in the UK and you don't know this, maybe you're living in some parallel universe that you just don't know what's going on because it's been going on for a few weeks now. Uh, Rishi Sunak is out, the Conservatives are out. Labour have won a landslide, they've won 412 seats or thereabouts, there's still a couple of uh, results to come out. Uh, and it's, it's like a landslide, almost on a par with a sort of Tony Blair landslide in, in the 90s. And the Tories have lost a couple of hundred seats, they're down to like 150 odd seats. Nigel, Farge, Nigel Farage's Reform Party have uh, won so far four seats, but it could be five. There's still another recount going on in, in Basildon. So what does this mean? What does this mean for the housing market in particular? A lot of my listeners are how, uh, into, into housing and uh, property. Uh, what does it mean for the economy? Uh, and, and, and you, really, because I think a lot of people have voted for, for, for Labour because they wanted to change. They, they're not feeling it in their pockets and... You know, the, the, the Conservatives really have themselves to blame. They're infighting, they're backstabbing, getting rid of uh, so many Prime Ministers, getting rid of Boris, who brought them a, an 80 uh, seat landslide in 2019. Uh, they, they stabbed him in the back. Uh, there's been a lot of infighting, and, I, 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 and they just really haven't delivered on the promises that they've made. So I don't want this is not a political podcast, but I, I think. They, they've uh, been their own worst enemy and they will now have to rebuild, but it could take a decade before they are back in power, unless Labour completely sort of mess up. So let's go through some of the, the points that I've made. I've written some notes here. Um, first of all, what, it, what will it mean for uh, the economy? Well, they promised to uh, boost growth. They want growth, but again, the, the election promises have been very vague and he's been questioned on these things many times during the campaign, but. He's been so vague. All he keeps saying is our plans are fully costed, and uh, you know, uh, and and we won't reduce taxes and all these sorts of things. It's just like um, a dummy with with Tony Blair's hand up his back like a ventriloquist doing saying like just stick to the script, stick to the script, stick. My my plans are fully costed. It, that's what it seems to me. They, they've told us nothing really. Uh, how they're going to boost growth? Well, let's face it. The last government has not really managed to boost growth. They've, they've increased taxes uh, for uh, businesses and, and made us uh, a high tax paying country compared to say country like Ireland where you know the corporation tax is half of what it is in the UK. They've increased taxes to the highest level for 70 years. We're all feeling it in our pockets. Um, and I, I just don't know why Rishi Sunak went for a quick election because good news is coming out. Um, interest rates could go down this month in, in July, uh, employment figures have just come out today. Ironically, today employment figures come out saying saying that 206,000 jobs have been added to the employment figures. So we, we've got a bit of growth there now. It's things are slightly coming out. Inflation is down to two percent. Why the Bank of England couldn't reduce rates last month, I, I just don't know because that could have helped their campaign. But had he waited a few months, I think the result could have been very different. Um, but but they, they haven't really exploded growth. Liz Truss wanted to, to cut taxes and, and boost growth, but she went in a, a bit fast and the globalists and the bankers didn't like her out. You know, So that, that's, they, they're the ones pulling the, the strings, unfortunately. Uh, and Labour say they want to uh, in, increase growth and jobs and that sort of thing. What it will probably mean is more government spending, more big projects and that sort of thing, um, and, and higher taxes for the wealthy who will then just leave. Uh, they're talking about uh, taxing billionaires and that's going to raise money for the NHS and schools. It's rubbish. They'll, they'll just go. They'll just move on somewhere else. I mean, countries like Portugal have have uh, announced um, uh, special tax breaks for, for retirees. They're trying to attract people. We are repelling people. Um, so in terms of uh, property market, if they do boost growth, if they, if they bring in a first-time buyer scheme, that will be good because people need low interest rates and money in their pocket to be able to have the confidence to buy a property. They need that. And if they, if they do that, that will automatically increase the housing market without doing anything else. Um, in boom times, people buy properties, they borrow money, they, they go out and spend money. But you know, we haven't had that. We, we've had um, you know, times over the last few years through no fault of anybody's really. It's, it's world events, wars, you know, what will happen in 2021, uh, all being told to stay in our homes. That's, that's, that wasn't in the plan. Um, so, you know, 
that that's probably st stunted growth as well and, and, and increased the government debt to trillions whereby our interest payments are, are huge. So still, still, Keir Summer is going to have to deal with that. He's going to have to deal with the enormous debt, the fact that there's not much money around uh, and, and then his promise not to increase taxes apart from putting VAT on private schools. Yes, parents who send their kids to private schools will now have to pay 20% more for the fees uh, because of Labour saying, oh, it's not fair that they, they can send their kids to private schools. But where are they going to go? If they can't afford the private schools, they will have to go into the state system, which will cost all of us more money. They should be getting tax relief to send their, their child to private schools because each child going to a private school is saving the state 5000 a year. It's, it's, it's releasing another uh, place for, for other people who can't afford private schools. But they, they will be increasing taxes, of course they will. They haven't told us yet, but everyone will pay more tax in some form or another. Um, remember Gordon Brown raiding pensions before. Uh, that, that cost the pensions industry billions. Uh, but these sneaky little taxes, these stealth taxes will be increased. Um, in London, they've just increased tax on electric vehicles going into London. They, they're going to extend the congestion charge to electric vehicles as well, which were previously exempt. So the government says, oh, go and buy electric cars and you get all these benefits. Now they're pulling them back in. That, that's, we're going to see more of that. That's from next year in London, by the way. Um, so I think what, what they promised to do is uh, build more houses, one and a half million houses in this, this parliament. That's their promise, 300,000 a year. Uh, but but I seem to remember the Conservatives had the same target, so there's nothing new there. Uh, the Conservatives didn't reach their target, they, they probably reached around 200,000 a year, but it depends on the private sector, it depends on the planning laws. If you have planning laws where it takes two years to, to get from uh, buying a piece of land and a project to, to start putting spades in the ground, that doesn't work, that's not going to help, is it? You've got to make it easier and have more planning officers and have a more efficient system of getting things through the planning. I'm not saying we should just build everywhere, build in Hampstead Heath and these sorts of things, no. But you've got to have planning laws that work for for developers, it works for, for uh, home builders, okay? Uh, because at the moment they're relying on the private sector to build houses and then g give a few crumbs of affordability which comes in the form of a shared ownership scheme which are complete rubbish anyway um, what if they really want to change the housing market Labour should go back to what they were doing in the 60s and 70s and build uh, council properties build local authority housing that will give uh, the poorer members of society uh, affordable rents and and that security that they get with with the government rental scheme or they can get housing associations to encourage them to build uh, more houses. When I was a councillor in, in local government, they didn't want to build council houses. Oh no, we can't build council houses because people might buy them under a right to buy. I mean, they're like they're, they're brain dead half of them, you know. Uh, but they've got to they've got to boost that because Cameron, David Cameron, when he was prime minister, promised to build seven new cities in the southeast of England. They never happened. Then it became let's build garden villages. Well, I don't think they happened either. All they're doing is tacking on bits of flats and you know uh, big high-rise developments here and there um, so yeah that, that's not going to work so let's see what happens there they have promised to build this um, uh, they, they, they in, in terms of um, tenancies in the housing market they, they're, probably to, they're, they're probably going to bring in some form of rent control and I'm sure that the rental reform bill will be resurrected it died just before the, the end of the last parliament when uh, it didn't have time to go through uh, so they'll probably ramp that up and, and bring in a few extra twists. Certainly, I, I think Section 21 will go, Section 21, no fault evictions, and they're probably going to try and introduce a more secure form of tenancy, giving tenants more rights, even more rights than they've got now, harder to evict people, um, less power by, by the landlord. It's bad news for, for, for buy-to-let buy landlords, especially the smaller buy-to-let landlords who've also been hit with uh, George Osborne's tax on land. There was a tax raid under Section 24 where you can no longer offset the interest on your mortgage if you're a small landlord with, with the mortgage in your own name. You can do something about that, by the way. Check out my link below um, if you're in that position. Um, so, so it's bad news for, for landlords and it will certainly discourage them from going into the market. So what does that mean for tenants? Well, obviously, there'll be less properties around and more higher rents, obviously. Um, there could be an increased housing supply if, if Labour does build a lot more properties and that, that in turn could bring properties 
uh, more affordably or a little bit down if there's more supply supply and demand the old supply and demand but I, I don't know new build properties tend to be bad value in my opinion that they, they they tend to make up their own prices and it, it, to, to me buying a new build property is like buying a new car it's worth less as soon as you drive it off the, the driveway uh, they, they over they overprice new properties and some of the deals are not that good um, housing affordability um, again if they bring in more secure tenancies if they if they bring in a new help to buy type scheme that could make it easier but there's also a, a chance that they might uh, take away some of the tax breaks for first time buyers like stamp duty tax breaks because they need the money um, and and unfortunately a socialist government loves taxing people they are tax and spend in the, in the end that's what they do they don't say that when they're, they're campaigning obviously they're not saying, oh we're going to increase your taxes and blow all your money but that's what happens in, inevitably every Labour government has ended up wrecking the economy and leaving us worse off that's that's a fact look it up um, so on the buy to let market rent controls um, bad news for uh, for uh, landlords also perhaps um, protecting rent hikes and that sort of thing. But to be fair, these things were probably coming in under the renters reform, uh, but it was, heavy, it was, it was um, the reason it took so long to go through is that a lot of MPs and members of the Lords are also landlords and they didn't want all these things, so they, they resisted it. Um, but it will certainly reduce the profitability of buy to let landlords, uh, enhance tenants protection, longer term tenancies, restrictions on, no, on section 21, as I've said, uh, and this could, damage landlords flexibility in managing their properties however the corporates are getting into the market in a big way they're going in for the uh, build to rent market which they have been encouraged to do by the government last government and you know you see uh, big companies building huge blocks of co-living properties it's hard for a smaller landlord to compete with that because you've got these nice shiny new properties with with cafes underneath and young people with their apples sitting there looking all very happy co-living in harmony together i mean how can you compete with that when you've got you know a five bedroom hmo in, in the suburbs you know it, it's hard to compete with that um but you can you can you can give give your house uh, your, your hmos an uplift and make them more uh, attractive to to young professionals because there's still a market there but whether that the new tenancy laws will, will discourage it, I don't know. Um, but certainly the, the big companies like Lloyds Bank, Blackstone are, are investing heavily in, in property. And does it go back to this Klaus Schwab uh, statement, you will own nothing and be happy? You know, it, it seems to be, I don't think that's really going to happen, but it, it's this, uh, this this movement towards that, you know, the big, the big corporations taking over housing. But is that going to help smaller uh, tenants who can't afford these shiny new places no you know the, the professionals are going to be sucked up by the, the the corporates and and the rest of them will be well you can have the crumbs private landlords if there's any left uh, it's not as bad as that obviously there'll still be private landlords they need private landlords so but labor has a habit of um, shooting themselves in the foot um, and, and and discouraging private landlords to the extent that they just get out of the market we, we shall have to see um, we don't want to go back to the days of complete rent controls where, you know, in, in the 50s you rented a property to somebody and you could not increase the rent ever. So you had sitting tenants that wouldn't leave the property even when they wanted to sell it. They had to buy them out, they had to give them money to go. Um, th those properties are largely gone now, but there were a lot of properties that had sitting tenants and, you know, speculators used to buy them and then try and persuade the, 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 the one old lady in the loft to leave and that sort of thing. But whether, I don't think they're around anymore. Um, so Labour also said they'll revisit some of the tax reliefs available to landlords. We still get some, believe it or not, and, and tax incentives on buy to lets. Obviously, they're going to hit landlords. We've already been hit by the last government. They were conservatives, or were they? Um, and, and now we're going to have Labour coming in who, who basically hate private landlords culturally in, in, their, in their DNA. They don't like us. Um, so what will it mean for landlords? increased regulation, lower returns, less flexibility, and, and really less incentive to invest in buy to let. But there's still a market there. Um, I'm not saying don't do it. These changes are not going to come in immediately. It'll probably be sometime in the next session. So they're unlikely to come in until the end of the year or next year. Um, but tenants will benefit, obviously. I mean, if you're a tenant now and you can't afford rent, 
obviously you're going to you're going to vote Labour because you think well if I vote Labour I might get a better deal I, I might get more rights I might get more properties built or you know they're going to change me they're going to change my life but it doesn't really work like that whoever's in government we still have to row our own boat right um, you know we, we uh, we're not going to get handed everything on a plate we still have to row our own boat now talking of boats that's a neat little a segue into this next section which is immigration it hasn't been talked about very much in the election um, but the new Prime Minister has promised to end this small boats debacle this is these boats coming across from Calais to to, to Dover welcomed in and given and, and people have been given the red carpet and and straight into a hotel or accommodation uh, given health care and benefits and all the rest of it even if they've arrived illegally without a passport uh, and he said he's gonna he's gonna deal with this and, and he was questioned in a debate, live debate with Rishi Sunak. And Rishi said, and this is the first time I've seen Rishi actually get aggressive. He said, what are you gonna do about it? What are you gonna do? And and he said, well, we're gonna process them. And he said, what does process mean? What do you mean process? And, and what it really means is that processing means, I would say almost certainly some sort of amnesty scheme or what the Tony Blair government called the legacy scheme. So in other, in other words, if you're here, you've overstayed, you're illegally here, you've arrived on a lorry or a boat, let's give you amnesty, let's all give you the right to remain here, uh, some sort of, uh, um, a, 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 you know, you just go to an advisor or a lawyer and you, you, you fill in a form and you get you get the right to stay here uh, in effect. It's not quite as simple as that. Um, and, and they'll be given an amnesty. What will that do? That will encourage more people to come, which is exactly what it did before. Um, so if you're an illegal immigrant here or you're someone who've overstayed your visa, hold tight for the amnesty because that's what's gonna, going to happen. So how does that affect landlords? Well, a lot of landlords make their living from uh, leasing their properties to companies like Serco who put asylum seekers in those properties. Will that change? I don't think it's gonna change immediately, but obviously if they give the people the right to stay, then they may not get the benefit of you know, free housing and hotels and that sort of thing. And they may be say, well, now you can work, you're on your own, uh, you can apply for a, for a benefit if you like, but you're effectively like everybody else. You're not going to be given this special treatment. So that could change the market there. I don't know. At the moment, companies like Circo make millions uh, probably every month from this this market. And, and they're, they're renting homes all over the country, especially in the north. And, and they're just filled with asylum seekers, mainly young men. Uh, and they get a good rent from the government. The landlords get a good deal. And, and they're leasing those properties. So look, in conclusion, uh, that Keir Starmer said this morning he will bring in change. I might look a bit tired because I've been watching these the, these events unfold all night. And he said he, he will bring change. How he's going to do it, that, that's another matter. It takes time. Um, and you know, if you stay tuned to this channel, I will be telling you what's going on. Um, but one thing I do want to talk about is, is the landlord's uh, section 24 landlord tax hike, which is brought in by George Osborne, who was actually on TV last night, uh, you know, pontificating on what's going on. And they had a, they, they had a, he was sitting next to um, uh, Nicola Sturgeon. I, I thought she, she was accused of fraud up there, up, up in Scotland, well, certainly her husband was. Um, anyway, they, you know, I, I've got an interview with, with a chartered accountant on YouTube talking about uh, how you can get around section 24 legally uh, if you're affected, if you're a landlord with two, three, four, five, however many properties in your own name, you will undoubtedly be paying more tax if they have a mortgage on those properties. And and also you, you've got a problem when it comes to inheritance tax or a legacy, leaving a legally easily and quickly to your children, maybe without giving up control of those properties by, by using uh, companies companies in trust using the trust system this accountant can advise on on all of that uh, so I, I'd advise you to, to, to look at that if you if you need help with inheritance tax planning leaving a legacy or dealing with section 24 drop me a line charles at charleskelly.net and I'll put you in touch with them um, or watch the videos I was at the landlord show uh, this this week in, in London in old Billingsgate heard some very interesting talks one of the talks was was about stamp duty you know, a lot of people pay stamp duty on, on commercial deals, on, on developments that they shouldn't be paying. There is a way of getting that back. So if, if you've, you think you've overpaid on stamp duty, come back, come back to us and we'll see what we can do. Okay, lastly, if you like what I'm saying, please like and subscribe uh, and share it wherever you're watching this. I, I do share this out to social media. And do check out my, my weekly webinars 
three steps to unlocking financial freedom where I go through three quick steps to get control of your money with good money, money management tips, um, get the mindset right and then build towards financial freedom in the future. So check that out. It's usually around 7 p.m. on a Wednesday evening. You can register for it here. It's absolutely free and we'll, we'll go from there. So momentous day, historic day. Uh, th there's a lot of firsts here. Uh, we're seeing the first uh, female chancellor, Rachel Reeves, who previously worked at the Bank of England. Um, you know, we're, 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 we're seeing uh, one of the biggest landslides for, for Labour in, you know, since Tony Blair back in the 90s. Uh, and, um, you know, we're seeing an end to this 14 year conservative rule, which has done some good things. I mean, you've got to say they did relax planning laws. They brought in permitted development. They have done some good things. Uh, but they've done a lot of bad things, which have, I think has upset their voters, certainly upset the, the two million or so private landlords. I actually, an, another ex-minister, Brandon Lewis, was on TV last night. I met him once. I said, what are you, and when he was housing minister, I said, what are you doing bringing in this, the, these laws that are, are going to push more tax on private landlords? And uh, I, I said, you are, you know, biting the hand that feeds you. You are, you're stabbing the very people in the back that vote for you, that tend to vote for you, private landlords, business people, small businesses, they are small businesses, tend to vote conservative, in, not all the time, but in the main. And he just said, we don't want mum and pop uh, landlords, we want the corporates, the corporates, we want the corporates. And that's exactly what they've done. They've handed it all over to the corporates, uh, the Blackstones and the, the big hedge funds and the big banks like Lloyd's, um, I mean, Lloyds Bank, they own Halifax. They're one of the biggest lenders in the country. Um, they, 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 they control many of the business accounts in the country. Now they're going to give them, let, let's go and buy the properties. That means they can effectively repossess your property and buy it themselves and put it into their own portfolio. It's a conflict of interest in, as far as I'm concerned. Um, they can also compete against private landlords because they have the money in their bank to invest in themselves. <laughs> anyway, enough rant for the day. Um, I hope you have a good weekend ahead. And, uh, you know, as I said, whatever happens, you know, whoever you vote for, the government always gets in and we've got to row our own boat. So check out my, my webinar this Wednesday evening on the three steps to financial success. And you will learn how to get control of your own money and start becoming financially free in your own right. You don't have to rely on the government. Keir Starmer, Rishi Sunak, Boris, they're not gonna do it for you. You have to do it for yourself. And, and you have to become self-sufficient. So do check out my webinar. Thank you very much. Hope this has been useful. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a comment in, in the, the set comment section. Always like to hear your comment, even if you agree with me or not. I always like to hear, and I always answer the comments. Thanks very much. Charles Kelly, Money Tips. See you soon.